Well, hello, everybody. I'm Huell Hauser. Get ready for an adventure, because right now we're heading out across the ocean. Our destination is Santa Cruz Island, which is about 20 miles out there. Now, we're going to be spending all day on Santa Cruz, but what makes this adventure just a little bit different is that we're not going to actually be on the island. We're going to be inside Santa Cruz Island. It's going to be a lot of fun and educational, too. So get ready for a day inside Santa Cruz Island in search of California's gold. got over to Santa Cruz Island on a catamaran operated by Island Packers out of Ventura. And after we dropped off a large group of students who were going to spend a day exploring the island, we set off on our own adventure, which would take us inside the island. Okay, we have left the big boat and we are in the water. Here's Santa Cruz Island in front of us and Garrett, this is the you know, I said we were going to be visiting the island, but we weren't going to be on the island. We were going to be inside the island. Let everybody know what exactly that means. Where are we heading right now? Yo, we're heading into one of the 120 sea caves on Santa Cruz Island. We are on the north side of Santa Cruz. These are all erosional sea caves, which means they were formed through many years, uh, through the wind, waves, currents, and pretty much basic, uh, f you know, very fragile rock formations. This was all uh, magma, lava, lava rock. They call it uh, Santa Cruz lava rock. And it is, uh, it's very unique to this area. And it's only found on this north side of this island. Look at these, and these are called sea caves. Now, is this kind of unique to Santa Cruz Island, or are there sea caves on other Channel Islands in California. There are sea caves on other Channel Islands in California. Santa Cruz holds a very large population of sea caves, and as well, Anacapa Island to our east holds a very large population of sea caves. Boy, look at this. When you come up under and in this thing, this, are we gonna go in here? You're right, you got it, Hill. We're heading straight towards that little hole. Better throw on that helmet. Keep your head safe. So wait a minute, you gotta wear a helmet? You do, here, I'll hand it to you. Why is that? Well, we wanna make sure that you don't hit your head on the rocks, and like I said, these are very fragile rocks formed through uh, cold water eruption, and they've been underwater for so long, they're very fragile, and things like just birds landing on them can set them off and set them into the water. Now, is this considered a big cave? Is this, how does this compare to the other 119 caves? Uh, well, each one of them has its own little special beauty, and uh, every one of them is big, every one of them is small. They just all have their own, their own special characteristics. This one here, as you look straight up, you can see a little bit of crack in the ceiling. Some of these were created by uh, the separation of the rock, uh, also fueled by uh, aquifers or springs dripping down into this crack. Boy, this is... And does this go, oh look, there's light at the end of the cave. Ha! So now, this just cuts right through one of the, one of the rocks on the island. Yeah, this is, uh, we're in Kochi Point area on the north side of Santa Cruz towards the east end. Look at this. Oh, this is great. Hey, you see that water dripping down from the ceiling up here? That's actual natural spring water. And that's, like I said, that's part of the reason these caves are formed. Look at the color of the water when the light hits it. Oh, this is, oh, this is beautiful. Okay, we're out of one cave in this kind of, what is this, like a cove back in here? Yeah, it's a beautiful cove with very crystal clear water, lots of kelp. Beautiful intertidal zones over here, and uh, another cave. Now, is this cave, I mean, how do you know what you're getting into when you, when you get into one of these things? 
Well, it's very tough, and it's good to be uh, an experienced paddler. 